listening to the White Wall Sessions Radio. Welcome to the White Wall Sessions Radio. I'm your host, Dan Schaefer. On this week's episode, we feature Pushing Chain, Barbaro, and John Slap. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter by searching The White Wall Sessions. We are now accepting submissions for Season 7. To submit, go to whitewallsessions.com. The White Wall Sessions would like to thank these fine sponsors for their support. Last Stop CD Shop, Bell Incorporated, Workplace IT Management, J. Rick Luthery, The University Center, Screen Flare, The Pink Moon Room, Club David, Great Outdoor Store, Local Branded Convenience Stores, Minuteman Press, Vishnu Bunny Tattoo and Piercing, and South Dakota Friends of Traditional Music. With a history spanning over 20 years, the duo Pushing Chain has been around the nation performing roughly 200 shows a year. The duo performed for us back in season three, and we couldn't wait to have them back for another performance. The Minnesota natives just recently released their newest album, Sorrows Always Swim, which is available now. Pushing Chain is Boyd Blomberg, guitar and vocals, and Adam Moe on fiddle and vocals. My baby's kisses, that's what I miss. My baby's kisses can always make me smile. My baby's kisses, I know what this is. My baby's kisses never going out of style. All the letters that we wrote could sink each and every boat. This itch won't satisfy until then we'll only try wearing sugar for a coat. It's a taste and that's a quote. Forever love will never say goodbye. My baby's kisses, that's what I miss. Is. My baby's kisses can always make me smile. My baby's kisses. I know what this is My baby's kisses never going out of style Where the meal very far See the moon can't be a star Look a window, not a door Opens up a little more Most see miles in a car Out where the gravel meets the tar But forever love is all we're asking for My baby's kisses That's what I miss is. My baby's kisses can always make me smile My baby's kisses, I know what this is My baby's kisses never going out of style Well, I'll dream of her tonight with my pillow head so tight Her arms are long to stay, I know there will come a day Dusky silence is our light, I was sure and shining bright Forever love will never fade away My baby's kisses, that's what I miss is. My baby's kisses can always make me smile My baby's kisses, I know what this is My baby's kisses never going out of style My baby's kisses, that's what I miss is. My baby's kisses can always make me smile My baby's kisses, I know what this is My baby's kisses never going out of style Yeah, so kisses never going out of style My baby's kisses never going out of style The White Wall Sessions would like to welcome back Pushing Chain. Welcome. Thank hey, you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Great. We have Boyd Blomberg. Yes. And we have Adam Moe. That's me. 
And we had you guys on this, the show in season three, and we just thought it was amazing, and we're so glad you are back. Well, we're glad to be here. Thank yes, you. We are. Thanks for having us. It's a great thing you're doing. So, Thank you. So you are from the beautiful north shore of Lake Superior, Duluth, North Shore area? I am, I am in Duluth. Yep, and uh, he lives in Lutzen, the, the, out, been, the outskirts of Lutzen. I grew up in the Twin, uh, Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul, but I've been up on the shore for 22, 23 years, yeah. something like that. Mm-hmm. Beautiful up there. Very I, nice. My brother-in-law lives in has a car, cabin in Two Harbors, or near Two Harbors. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a kind of a nutty place to tour out of. You know, <laughs> you have to add it's two a, hours to every drive. Yeah, you know, <laughs> just to brilliant. Get started, you know, or fly or anything. You know, it's like it's yeah. tough, but. So, how long have you guys been together now? Well, we, we just had our anniversary. We had a anniversary <laughs> in March, and yeah, yeah, it was uh, twenty years. Twenty in March. years. The the dynamics of a duo. Are you are you business partners, <laughs> friends, enemies, brothers, all oh. of the above? <laughs> yeah, all those things and even more. The <laughs> only thing we're couple. probably not as uh, we don't snuggle well, but <laughs> no, when we check into a hotel, we got to say we're a duo, not a couple. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it it. I don't know. It depends on the day. That's a tough question. Well, we're mostly friends, yeah. and it's like a marriage in a lot of ways, which I only have. Four 14 years of experience I was married. But Adam here has been married, just has 23 years. 23 year years. Wedding anniversary. Yeah. I got married when I was four. <laughs> but the biggest thing is, is yeah, is uh, we know each other well, so we give each other wide berth if we know we're a little owly or whatever the deal is. or we, You know, I mean, we know each other well. It, it's uh, un, nearly unspoken. Let's just say we already know what's going to be on the TV in the hotel room tonight. <laughs> It's going to be some kind of cops. <laughs> yeah, we sit around, <laughs> eat cold pizza, and watch cops. At, uh, no, that's not true. But, I mean, you know, is, is, a, is just two harder or easier than, say, three or four or five as a band? It depends on the thing you're talking about. If you mean, like, on stage, it's probably harder than a band. But if you mean, like, organizationally... It's got to be a lot easier. With well, two. you know, you know what our pushing chain mantra is: you have to be a real good drummer to be better than no drummer at all. <laughs> yeah. So that haven't met that person. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, there are times when I wish that we were a five piece because you know you, you don't feel like being on all the time, or we have an upright player or something. But mostly, it's been a function of uh, economics. Mm. You know. Because you can get one hotel room, we tr- uh, tour a little Mazda, and throw all, all the gear in, you know. The math is easier to just split things in half. Yeah, you know. You yeah. don't have to do all the complicated you thirds right. and fourths and thirds. Right. <laughs> but uh, that said, we do, uh, we bring other players in, mm. you know, every, every once in a while. On our CD release show uh, uh, this year, we're going to have a full band because this last album is a full band project. So that'll be so you'll be playing live with the full band then. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. As pushing chain, or are you mm-hmm. gonna change? Yeah, it? as pushing chain. Uh, yeah. Our friend Noah Levy is gonna play drums. Old bandmate of mine from the Goonie Birds, uh, Pito, is gonna be uh, on the guitar seat. Uh, we have a couple bass players that we're not waiting to hear back, and you know. Hey, we gotta talk about the Goonie Birds just for a little bit. That was a band okay. I saw back in the eighties. I'm gonna run to the bathroom while you <laughs> <laughs> once upon a time. Gather round, kids. <laughs> Tell us of the Goonie Birds, grandfather. <laughs> but isn't haven't you played uh, recently? And Adam, haven't you been in that? Too? Sure. Yeah. I, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly I'll sing harmony, but a couple yeah, tunes play, I'll play do some fiddle. And, yeah. Uh, it was a great experience. Uh, you know, we started playing when we were about 19 and um, traveled around the country. It was great. Uh, the band over the years has uh, seen some tragedy. We lost uh, our singing drummer, Steve Rumler, eight years ago to a heroin overdose. And Jessica Schwartzbauer, that sang with us, uh, uh, passed away due to a uh, domestic violence. Mm-hmm. She was murdered by her husband. Oh, my. 
And so I've seen a lot of tragedy, but we still play and at least a couple, three times a year. We, we did a, you know, a Caboose a reunion show. We have a standing gig. Uh, a couple of our old fans own Excelsior Brewing outside of Minneapolis in Excelsior, Minnesota. So we play their Oktoberfest every year. And so, uh, you know, a few things like that. We're getting, uh, we're going down to New Orleans. An uh, old fan of ours, Kels, who are playing her wedding next March, which will be a that's, gas. That's awesome, <laughs> right? In New Orleans? You kidding me? <laughs> and an old fan getting married and wants to live the band. That's You're pretty right. cool. <laughs> I've played the fool Never given too much thought About knowing all the rules Now day by day I've come to know What a real love can be When it beckons from below If you should ever want to see me again You said a future's long and now we're waiting on an end If you should ever want to see me again Tell me when Mile after mile I drove all night to your door When all is said and done Who am I to want some more? Now inch by inch I'm crawling out Out of this lonesome hole where I've been living note to note If you should ever want to see me again You said the future's long and now we're waiting on a name If you should ever want to Tell me when and where And I promise I'll be there Again. You 
say the future's long and now we're waiting on a name. If you should ever want to see me again, tell me when and where, and I promise I'll be there. Just tell me when and where, and I promise I'll be there. Thank you very much, folks. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks for letting us White Wall, guys, thank you. Thanks. Coming up after the break, Barbaro. You are listening to the White Wall Sessions Radio. Barbaro, an award-winning bluegrass team from Minneapolis, Minnesota, delivered their unique style and bluegrass sensibilities to an engaged studio audience. The band is Kyle Shellstead on guitar and vocals, Rachel Calvert on fiddle and vocals, newcomer Jason Wells on bass, and Isaac Samis on banjo. The band recently released their self-titled EP and is looking forward to a full album release this spring. Is that all right? Uh, we're Barbara. Uh, this first tune we're going to play is one off our EP called Two for Tea. Sitting up top with me 
We're here at the White Wall Sessions with Barbara. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Rachel, could you introduce this band? Um, this is Barbaro, and uh, we play per- bluegrass plus music, and we're based out of the Twin Cities. So who we got here? Who are the players? I'm Rachel. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Isaac. I play the banjo. <laughs> I'm Kyle. I play the guitar. Uh, I'm Jason. I play the bass. Now, Jason, are you, you're new in the band-ish? Yeah, so I'm actually... The official bass player as of last week, nice. so so brand new. I've been playing with the band um, for some of their shows for about two months. Yeah, well, I think you guys got a good one. He's you know he, he, that's some great bass playing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you know, he too. like the first time we ever practiced with him, he like knew all of our songs better than we did. It was really. really- Right. <laughs> kind of in an almost upsetting way. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have a classical background? We were talking a little bit earlier. Yeah, so um, I do have extensive uh, classical training. I'm actually a professional classical musician. So I play in a few different orchestras uh, throughout the Midwest. Yeah? So, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I got to just mention this. I talked about his bass, and he says it was made in 1890. So yeah, yeah, that's, when that's you go vintage, baby. you go vintage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, that that that's my baby. It's been with me for about a year and a half. It's a old German bass that I found uh in a shop in Minneapolis and uh, I saw it and I had to have it. Yeah. Well, so similarly, similar close to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um bluegrass goes back a long way. How did you all come to bluegrass? Well, um, it's a dark and stormy night. <laughs> I heard Bale Fleck and it was so sick. <laughs> Basically, um, Isaac and I, we met a, a while back. Uh, we were both playing in different bands and uh, and we decided to start a bluegrass band um, because we both like the music. Isaac plays the banjo, so um, we figured that's kind of fitting to the genre. Um, and and st- so when we started out, we were playing a lot of kind of more traditional style bluegrass stuff. Um, but now I think we're really starting to define our own tone and, um, it's maybe more progressive. Um, if you're a, if you're a staunch bluegrass, um, listener, it's definitely not bluegrass. Um, see, I noticed that too. First of all, I should say, Isaac, we, we had you here before with Tin Can Gin. Yeah. 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 Playing banjo with them. That was a good, that was a good bit. So that, those two styles of bluegrass are, are really different like you were saying yeah one of them is like pound a five hour energy before you play and then <laughs> sweat it out and this one's more like chill with a cocktail <laughs> <laughs> well there's a lot of dynamics in your in this band and there's space for everybody to play and it can get really soft and then go back i mean so you really have to trust each other when you're doing that right i think some of that um, sort of mindset came because Kyle and I started off playing as a duo and slowly added members. And so we, the first person we added after playing for a little while was a bass player. And like you can't do as much dynamically and with so few people. Um, as we added more people, it was kind of naturally in a quiet state and could like extend above and, and down. Yeah. It's a big, it's a big push of our music is to allow that space in it, um, and I think that's where we get away from bluegrass a little bit because bluegrass will, um, you know, the banjo is always rolling, the mandolin is always chopping. Um, here we allow like a little bit more space and breath in the music um, to try and yeah, that's thank you. That is our goal is to be dynamic. Well, it and, works. I mean, it really does. But um, but like I said, you have to make sure. I mean, when you're kind of going out on that limb as the not just the lead instrument, but sort of everyone's really quiet and you're there. You know, you've really got to give and take. There's a lot of give and take in this band. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fiddle coming into those kind of, I mean, that's a perfect example of when you come in with your flavor. I know. I feel like um, I love playing with these guys because I feel like you're all have all the tools in the toolbox and are really amazing musicians. But I don't think like any of us, our goal is to be like, Oh, look how good I am. Like, blah, blah, blah. it's like we're all listening really well to each other. And it's about, um, I don't know, just get, getting into the groove and um, yeah. just listening really carefully and like achieving a texture that's really interesting. And, um, and that's really, I know it's really fun and it's, it's nice to edit and hold back. And it's a, I know it's fun to play with you guys. Yeah. So it's the collective of the, of the the different instruments and then the different people playing them yeah. is is makes the whole makes the band rather than a group of individuals. I mean that may sound 
like the same thing, but it's not really. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, yeah. Um. So how long have you been playing fiddle? Or is uh, it a violin? Um, that's like a good, so I always answer that question with it depends how much whiskey I've had that day. <laughs> um, I, my mom was a violin teacher and I started playing violin when I was four and I grew up playing classical music um, and then kind of tried some new stuff in college and accidentally fell into the bluegrass scene when I moved back to the Twin Cities as an adult and here I am and I love it. It's really, yeah. and I think like a lot of us came to bluegrass from different like musical background so we all bring in kind of like unusual like tropes or like like sound ideas and that's i think part of the reason why we have the sound that we do one thing's for sure way the roses Loud your window, slam back door, neighbor's hands, they were holding, oh they're holding so much more. Somebody to look have been stamped framed and frozen soul of a woman salt of man in my way meant to be broken sun may be creeping through the clouds Be somebody to love
got faith Always the sign that calls for always Somebody to love Coming up after the break, John Slap. Thank you. You are listening to the White Wall Sessions Radio. John Slapp brought his electric guitar and six incredibly talented friends to a season six session where they rocked the house. It's, it's that neck. That's why. The band is John Slapp Myers on guitar and vocals, Phil Doe on drums, Adam Jones on guitar, Nate Brown on bass, Tim Munts on lead guitar, Laura Egan on trumpet, and Carl Graber on trombone. Sit here. It's just like practice. As you spread your wings, I will hold the locket where the ocean meets the land to the western sky. As the sun is setting, I will catch you looking back one last time.
All right, we are here with John Slap Myers from the band John Slap. Welcome, John. <laughs> Thank you. So you had a pretty amazing band behind you today. Yes. And you you had a lot of players there. Are you, can you tell us who they were? Yeah, we had Adam Jones um, on guitar, and then we had Nate Brown on bass. Um, we had Phil Mueller on drums. Um, <laughs> Tim Munson. Tim Munson on guitar, <laughs> and then... I'm horrible with the last names, but Laura and Carl, and they were uh, they were the horn players, the trumpet and the trombone. So sure, yeah. Now I thought I saw Nate playing your bass. I thought I recognized that. Yeah, that's my bass. I you... pretty much made him play it. <laughs> yeah, you are. You've been playing bass for a long time. Matter yeah. of fact, I thought I saw you with Derek Post years ago. Yeah, um, Adam Jones and I played with Derek for several years. Um, Adam on drums and myself on bass, and yeah, so. Man, it's been about 20 years. I've been mostly a bass player in bands. So, When did you switch over to guitar, or has it always been there? Well, I started playing guitar when I was in high school, and I was decent at it, and then went into college and met someone that I started a band with who was just better than me at guitar. And then we couldn't find another guitar player, so I was like, hey, well, then could you play bass? And then I just fell in love with it. So, But I've always like played guitar uh, for songwriting purposes, and that's yeah. about it, yeah. Well, bass can be can be really really fun if you if you approach it right. And you oh, I love it. it! I love it. It's my uh, yeah. It's my passion. Just bass guitar, definitely. Because there's there's a certain space in between the rhythm and the melody, and that's you. And you can you've got you can drive the band. You know? Yeah, so. and just locking with the drummer. <clears throat> I love that. Like if you listen to Pink Floyd, and you know I really looked up really look up to Roger Waters and his mm-hmm. bass playing, or just locks with that kick and. Uh, and also that element of some mel- or melodic type of stuff in between there, but mostly just keeping it locked with the kick. Like, I love yeah. that so much. So, yeah. yeah. So how long have you been writing songs then? Oh, uh, I don't know, probably the last 10 years. I was in a band several years ago called The Amadon Affair, and Adam, who played guitar in this project, played drums in that, and I was pretty much wrote about 50% of the songs for the band, and Tim also played guitar, um, mm. who was playing today. And um, so, yeah, mostly really started around that time. So when we started that band. Sure. Yeah. And so this latest collection of songs on the, 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 the Brandenburg, the EP you've got? Yeah. Um, when, did those, when did you write those? Um, well, have to, <clears throat> we put about two CDs out with the Amadon Affair. And then by the end, uh, when, right before we kind of ended the project, I had some skeletons of a couple that I thought might work for the band at that time, but um, then maybe sort of not. And then I just kind of held, just kind of always had them in the back burner. And then, uh, yeah, they weren't 100% done. And then <clears throat> I was just like, once in a while I pick up an, like an acoustic at home and I would just kind of play them and enjoy playing these ideas. And, and then I was just like, well, maybe I should record them someday and maybe do something. And, uh, and then I thought about it for a very long time because I knew how much work that is <laughs> and money you have to spend. And uh, so when I decided then during that process of tightening up those old ideas, I wrote some additional ones. And then we have the seven that I recorded and put out. So, yeah. So did you assemble this band specifically for those songs? Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, it was just more of a recording project where um, I had – Adam Jones, uh, he recorded drums, and he's an awesome drummer and an awesome guitar player. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> so I was really lucky there. And then I kind of just looked at it like, well, let's just make this like a fun friend type of project where all the people I've played throughout the years with, like, hey, could you put keyboards on this song? Or, hey, could you write a guitar part for this song? And so it's just like this whole collection of friends who contributed to it. And that's kind of the idea, and it was just more or less fun. It's yeah. just a fun project. So well, and you got some white wall session veterans in there. I know Adam and Phil, and certainly the horn section is from yep. uh, Donnie Brawlers. Yep, definitely. And, and then you've played with Burlap Wolf King. And, yeah. Um, so and Pask and oh, that's right, Adam Pask. played drums with Pask, and <laughs> so yeah. It's, were uh, you sort of playing guitar and singing in the Amadon Affair, or were you bass? I was just bass guitar. Okay, so is this your first project where you're sort of the focal point? Well, like with the Amazon Affair, I mean, I, I, like I said, I wrote 50% of the songs on guitar, and I pr- primarily tracked all the, the, the rhythm guitars and bass guitars on both of the, the CDs that we put out. 
Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, just for, I suppose I'm in front of a mic performing with a band. Yeah, that's the first time I've, with a guitar. So. so when you wrote these songs, um, you said you, that you, it kind of became a friend thing, but did you hear all those parts when you were writing them? Certainly the, or like the horns and there were three guitars up here. Did you, did you write for that or did they happen after the songs were there? Oh, I just wrote like just the basic just structure of the songs, like the, um, like the main rhythm parts and everything. And then I wrote the horn parts. And then um, just, you know, reach out to Adam because he plays, Adam Jones plays on one of the songs. And I was like, just write, a, write an additional guitar part for it. I reach out to another friend, write additional guitar player. Same with Tim. There's two songs, perfect. I want you to write two, just do whatever, mm-hmm. you know. And so, yeah, that's kind of how it worked. All right, this is Blue Morning. <laughs> the scenes driving down that gravel road she was standing next to me again my dad says you're on the phone you were floating out at sea Whitewall Sessions is recorded at Last Stop Studios in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and is produced by Spectrum Films Incorporated. Executive producers are Jeff Zuger, Doug Taylor, Greggy Johnson, and Jay Fishback. Head of broadcast is David Palmer. Associate producer is Mike Yeager. 
The White Wall Sessions Radio is produced and edited by Jeff Zuger. Audio recording and mixing by Kevin Phipps, Chad Conrad, August Ogren, and David Palmer. Scheduling and artist relations, Tom Eisner. Be sure to join us again next week. Same time, same place. You are listening to the White Wall Sessions Radio.